I just said to the Schlossbergs, I don't see any reason for me to make a speech right now. <laughs> all, the, all those beautiful things that I accept the compliments on behalf of all of my colleagues in the House of Representatives who made all of our accomplishments possible with their courage. Before, though, acknowledging and thanking the family, uh, for those who have been part of my journey to this moment, too, I must first pay tribute to the president who inspired this award. When we think back across the best and hardest passages of the past more than a half century, we not only remember the singular presence of John F. Kennedy, but we can see as if it were only yesterday how the patriotism brilliance, self-deprecating wit, and the natural grace he symbolized and conveyed truly did captivate and inspire the country and the world. How he renewed our public life and the very, very definition of America itself. Our presence now here this evening uh, in, in this ceremony this year inevitably and preeminently celebrates and honors him. That I too am honored with this award is something I accept with a full and humble heart. So thank you, Jack and Ambassador Kennedy. Jack, you not only share your grandfather's name, uh, but his spirit and commitment to public service at its best as a noble profession. I love what your mother had to say about you. It makes us all so proud to see you. Caroline, how proud your mother and father would be if to have seen the dignity with which you represented the United States in Japan. Uh, to witness that glorious day when the people of Tokyo flooded the streets, flooded the streets, to witness uh, you, to watch you uh, travel by char not chariot, but <laughs> what is it, a, a um, ca carriage, travel by carriage to present your credentials to the emperor of Japan, to witness America's best compliment to Japan. <laughs> Thank you, Ed, Tatiana, and Rose for being your own manifestations of excellence in everything that you do. Thank you, Ron Sargent, for being such an important leader of the foundation and for uh, regaling us this evening with uh, the, the goals of the foundation, but also the participation of so many in your important work. And that is an applause line. <laughs> there we go. And to Tom Kennedy for your leadership and for welcoming us to this extraordinary place. Let me express as well, but also thank you to, uh, uh, to Raytheon for helping us honor our oath to protect and defend the, co the Constitution of the United States. Thank you for your extraordinary leadership on this team. And let me express my abiding gratitude to the Profile and Courage Award Committee. I think they really did a good job. <laughs> I'm now in my new mode of being sort of not the modest woman in politics, but I think they did a good job. I'm happy about it. <laughs> and I want to extend my congratulations to Elazar Kramer for being selected as the 2019 Profile and Courage Essay, essay Contest winner. Beautiful, beautiful essay. And he wrote about one of the earliest women to serve in Congress, one of the first six women, and she was the chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee. It's a joy to share the celebra celebration with those in my family who are my foundation and my heart. My husband, Paul, husband of 55 years. Uh, <laughs> our children, Nancy, Corinne, Christine, Jacqueline, Paul, and Alexandra. Our grandchildren, uh, Madeline, Alexander, Paul, and Thomas. Our other grandchildren, busy with their studies and exams, but here in spirit, Liam, Sean, and Ryan, Bella, and Octavio. And also my, our sons-in-law who are here, Jeff and Michiel. Also like family to me are Congresswoman Anna Eshoo and Senator Chris Dodd. 
They had, were friends long before any of us were in Congress, and I'm so honored that they're here with us tonight. Well, I'm pleased to be joined by so many members of our official family in Congress. We are joined by present and former members from Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Texas, California, Maryland, and when I include former members of Congress, I'm including the Secretary of State, John Kerry, who's a former member of Congress. <laughs> And including Congressman Joe Kennedy, who eloquently enacts uh, in his generation uh, the, the Kennedy commitment to be a voice for the voiceless, Joe Kennedy. <laughs> the Kennedy family has given so much to America's history and to America's future. We remain, remain in the awe of the courage that is the Kennedy constant their courage to accept the best and the saddest that God's will has descended upon them, and their courage to be a model of faith and hope. Caroline, I especially remain inspired by the courage of your grandmother, Rose, your mother, Jacqueline, especially on this day, and by your courage, Madam Ambassador. <laughs> Officially, or I prize the distinction of being associated with past recipients who over three decades have been recognized for embodying that most admirable of human virtues, courage. There are many who have been honored from the Congress of the United States, but one whose courage some of us here have saw close up and personal uh, among this legion of honor was our friend, the late Jack Murtha, a proud deficit hawk, Tom, a deficit hawk who was recognized for his courage to speak out publicly against the war in Iraq. Before him came the peacemakers of Northern Ireland, John Hume and George Mitchell. Last month, while in Ireland, uh, I brought a delegation, uh, Richie Neal was the head of our delegation, on the 21st anniversary of the Good Friday Accords. I I was privileged to address the Doyle, their parliament, the Irish parliament, where I, at that time, invoked the words that President Kennedy spoke in that very chamber in the summer of 1963. This is what he said. The, the supreme reality of our time is our indivisibility as children of God and our common vulnerability on this planet. Just think of those words, how wise they are, and how, what appropriate guidance they are at this time. Let me repeat them. He said, the supreme reality of our time is our indivisibility as children of God and our common vulnerability on this planet. An imperative for us to do the right thing. Now I, I want to express my gratitude in personal terms as to what this award means to me. When I was a girl in Catholic school in Baltimore, the Irish nuns from Boston uh, would always sing the praises of the Kennedy family. This was a long time ago. In grade school, it was they who introduced us to the book Profiles in Courage, which had such an impact on me and on my generation. In high school, I had the privilege to meet Senator Kennedy when he came to Baltimore. My father was the mayor, and I got to sit at the head table. Everyone there was dazzled by his brilliance. In college, I attended the inauguration, and on that freezing, thrilling day, heard his electrifying call to public service. Never did I suspect then as how that, that later as House Democratic leader, I would participate in a ceremony commemorating the 50th anniversary of his inauguration by hearing his voice reverberate through the rotunda of the Capitol with that beautiful, beautiful inaugural address. And never did I expect that as Speaker of the House, I would be given this Profile in Courage Award. Profile in Courage, courage, Courage is in the DNA of America. 
courage, and the optimism and hope that go with it, which are the shaping experiences, the shaping spirits of the American spirit experience. President Kennedy had the courage, optimism, and hope when he pledged to America that we would land on the moon before the decade was out. Imagine the courage. When President Kennedy challenged us all, America, to go to the moon in his speech at Rice, he spoke words that today are our constant inspiration. My colleagues will recognize that because they're like the first page of all of our innovation initiatives. He said, the vows of this nation can only be fulfilled if we in this nation are first, and therefore we intend to be first. In short, our leadership in science and in industry, our hopes for peace and security, our obligation to ourselves and to others, all require that we make this effort. Today, those words are the preamble, as I said, to our innovation agendas and our constant motivation to address the urgency of the climate crisis, which is the challenge of our day. President Kennedy knew that America's success in that venture would take us well beyond the moon. It would solve problems here on Earth as well. Courage is in the DNA of America. It was in the DNA of our founders. It was manifested when they declared independence, premised on equality, which was the first time any nation had done that before. When they declared and waged and won a war on the greatest naval power that existed at the time. They when they declared not only a new nation, but a new order for the ages, which they inscribed in the great seal of the United States, Noble Order Seclorum, forever. Optimism, hope, courage. Imagine the audacity of their vision and their trust. It was not arrogance, but courage that launched this historic experiment in democracy, the United States of America. America has always been a place of courage from the immigrants who crossed the seas to take a chance on America, many knowing that they would never see their homes again. To the pioneers who crossed the trackless continent, that saga, that saga has its scars, but without their courage, we would not be in America from sea to shining sea. To our heroes who protect our communities, our countries, our nurses, teachers, doctors, parents, our men and women in uniform, and their families and caregivers. Personally, to my father, and thank you, Caroline, for mentioning him, Thomas D'Alessandro, Jr., who blazed a trail as one of the first Italian-Americans in Congress, the first Catholic mayor of Baltimore, who would one day be sworn into the Kennedy administration by the president himself in the Oval Office. <laughs> To my colleagues, and that's just an example, that's just an example, it's to my colleagues in the Congress who had the courage to elect me the first woman speaker of the House. <laughs> I don't like when people say I'm the highest ranking woman this or that because I thought by now we would certainly have a woman president and hopefully that will be sometime in the near future. However, uh, it did take courage for my colleagues to elect a speaker. When I became speaker the first time, a Massachusetts Democrat, Father Drynan, spoke to members at a mass the day before my swearing in at my alma mater, Trinity College, Trinity now Trinity University in Washington, my roommate Celia and Reed are here. He reminded us of our responsibility to the children. He said, now maybe we have a woman speaker that everybody's focus will be on children, urging us never to forget Christ's personal love of children. He said, as I look around this church, I see many people with conviction and commitment to their ideals. But what is important is the third C, the, cur the courage to act upon those ideals. In my public life, I have seen leaders who understood that their duty was not to do what was easy, but what was right. 
especially when my colleagues had the courage to support the Affordable Care Act, the health care reform that Senator Kennedy called the cause of our lives. When he left us, the press came to me and said, well, I guess it's over for you in the Affordable Care Act. I said, not at all. This, as Senator Kennedy said over and over, the cause of our lives, this is the challenge to our generation. We will not let this opportunity pass. And they said, well, it doesn't look possible. How do you intend to do this? I said, well, this is, we are going to do it, and we're not going to let any obstacles stand in our way. So we're going, if we go up to the gate, the gate is locked, we push open the gate. If we don't push open the gate, we'll leapfrog over it, pole vault over it. If that doesn't work, we'll parachute in. <laughs> but we're not letting anything stand in the way of passing affordable care, of care for all Americans. So when we did, they came in and they said, which one did you do? <laughs> and I said, actually, we only pushed open the gate. We were able to do that because of the courage of my colleagues in the Congress of the United States. And, and if most of the reason I'm receiving this award is because of passing the Affordable Care Act, I share this award with all of my colleagues. Democratic colleagues in the House of Representatives <laughs> and in the Senate. But it wasn't just us. So many of you were there with us helping to push open that gate. At the grassroots level, the mobilization of little lobbyists, little children with pre-existing conditions, the nuns, God bless, thank God for the nuns, uh, the, just so many healthcare providers, uh, so many people standing with us, pushing open the gate. A real demonstration of what President, President Lincoln said, public sentiment is everything. With it, you can accomplish almost anything. Without it, practically nothing. Well, the public was with us in pushing open that gate, which made a big difference in the health and economic well-being of America's working families. And so this, my colleagues, this was, they were all profiles in courage. They were all profiles in courage. Let us, those who voted for this <laughs> legislation. In their name, and in the name of all who hold fast to an ideal in the midst of the storm, I accept this award. I do so with a word about what we face in these unprecedented years. In the darkest hours of the American Revolution, Thomas Paine wrote, the times have found us. They found our founders in the Revolution. They found Lincoln at the time of the Civil War. They found other times in the World War II. They found leaders in our country. Now, we don't place ourselves in those categories of our founders or Lincoln, but we do recognize the urgency of now in terms of what the challenge is uh, to the Constitution of the United States. And so, uh, uh, they have found us, the times have found us to strengthen America. It is not about politics, it is about patriotism. How, <laughs> How fitting it is that this award takes the form of a stunning silver lantern, Ed, symbolizing the fire that lights the world. You recognize those words. Thank you for this award, which I will proudly display in the Speaker's Office of the Capitol of the United States as a shining, <laughs> as a shining symbol of our obligation to meet the challenges of the times that have found us. Thank you. God bless the memory of President Kennedy and the family that he loved. May we heed his words that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. Thank you all so much for this honor. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you so much.